Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode of Side Projects. In this one today, bit of a depressing one with you to be honest, but it's history's worst industrial disasters. Let's jump in. Industrialization is among the most important facilitators of economic growth all over the world, but in the same vein, industries have been centre stage for some of the most chaotic incidents that the world has ever known. Either by accident, negligence, or just sheer incompetence by companies, industrial disasters have continued to occur throughout history, causing huge losses of life and livelihood. From deadly gas leaks to crazy infernos, we're going to be taking a look at some of the most devastating industrial disasters in history. So let's get into it. The Bhopal disaster was a tragic gas leak that occurred in a pesticide plant in Bhopal, India in December 1984. And I will just say, this channel has a sister channel called Mega Projects. If you don't know about that one, but you discovered this one, that's weird, but welcome. Uh, if you'd like to watch Bhopal, learn about Bhopal in depth, do check out that video on the Mega Projects channel. Of course, after you finish watching this video. The actual cause of the gas leak remains a mystery to this day, but in its aftermath, over 500,000 people were injured by the highly toxic methyl isocyanate gas. Indian activists argue that the incident was a result of poor maintenance by the management of the facility. In its defense, the company still maintains that the incident was manually triggered as an act of sabotage. The pesticide company Union Carbide India Limited had its first gas leak incident back in 1976. During that time, an employee had accidentally inhaled a large amount of phosphine gas, leading to his demise 72 hours later. Over the years, similar incidents continued to occur within the facility. But on December 2, 1984, the company experienced what would be considered one of the most disastrous industrial accidents in history. It is believed that water must have got into a tank containing over 38,000 kilograms of methyl isocyanate. The introduction of water into this tank had caused an exothermic reaction, which was made worse by contaminants such as iron rusts and dust particles. Within two hours, the gas pressure within the tank increased 20 times, ultimately cracking the tank in several places and allowing the gas to escape into the atmosphere. By the time employees noticed the presence of the toxic gas in the air, it was already too late, and most were already feeling the symptoms of exposure. The gas would rapidly spread through the city, infecting half a million residents. It is estimated that over 8,000 people died within two weeks of the accident, while another 8,000 or more have since died from long-term effects. In June 2010, seven former employees of the company, including its former chairman, were charged by the District Court of Bhopal and convicted for causing death by negligence. They were all sentenced to two years' imprisonment and a fine of $2,000 apiece. However, shortly after the court's verdict, they were released on bail. The Bengsihu Colliery disaster is the worst coal mine accident in all of history. It took place in April 1942 during the Second Sino-Japanese War, which was essentially a military conflict between China and Japan. During this conflict, Japan had successfully invaded the northeastern part of China, taking over the city of Bengsi and its underground coal mine, the Bengsihu Colliery. Many of the captured Chinese fighters were quickly mobilized to work in the mine under harsh conditions. They were forced to work 12 hours a day, and many suffered from diseases such as typhoid and cholera. On April 26, 1942, for reasons unknown, a gas and coal dust explosion occurred within the mine. The same flames bursting through the mine shaft entrance. The Japanese commanders were alerted to the situation, and in an attempt to prevent the underground fire from going further, they sealed off the mine's entrance, trapping over 1,500 workers inside the flaming belly of the coal mine. As you would expect, none of them survived. Of the 1,500 workers that were trapped inside the mine, only 31 were Japanese. The Japanese continued to operate the mine until after the end of World War II, when they were defeated and forced out of China. More investigations after World War II revealed that most of the workers died from carbon monoxide poisoning produced when the Japanese sealed off the pit. Only a handful had been killed by the initial explosion.
A Moko Cadiz was a supertanker built to ship large volumes of petroleum between the Persian Gulf and Europe. It was laid down in November 1973 and completed in May 1975. But on March the 16th, 1978, the hauler was struck by ill fate, having only been on the seas for two years. In the early hours of that day, a Moko Cadiz was on its way to Rotterdam through Lyme Bay in the United Kingdom. While speeding past the French islands of Ushant on the southwestern coast of the English Channel, the captain spotted another ship headed toward them. The captain tried steering a Moko Cadiz in a different direction to avoid making contact with the incoming ship, but in the process, his steering gear got jammed. Fortunately, there was no collision. Still, there was no time to relax at all because all efforts to fix the tanker had failed, prompting the captain to switch off the engine. At this point, the weather had gotten worse and the wind had begun to blow from the northwest, driving the ship toward the coast. The captain immediately mounted the international signal for not under command. However, he didn't call for help until three hours later. When his engineers determined that the problem was beyond their control, he decided to call a tugboat to stop the ship from drifting any further. It took about two hours before the tugboat located them, but by then, Hamoko Cadiz had already gone 11 kilometers closer to Portsaw Rocks, drifting at a speed of two knots. The tugboat spent the next several hours trying to connect a tow line to the tanker, but each time the tow line was connected, it would break off almost immediately. The sheer mass of Amoko Cadiz, along with the turbulent weather, made it impossible for the tugboat to do anything more than slow the ship's drift. At exactly 8.55 p.m., a Moko Cadiz struck a giant rock and began to leak. Thirty minutes later, a second rock ripped an even larger hole in the ship, flooding its engine room. All efforts to save the ship failed, and as the weather got increasingly severe, the ship split into three and completely sank. A Moko Cadiz was transporting over 1.6 million barrels, that's 219,000 tons of light crude oil at the time of its sinking, setting this event up as the largest oil spillage from any oil tanker in history. The Texas City disaster is considered the deadliest industrial accident to have ever occurred in the United States and one of the world's most colossal non-nuclear explosions. It took place in the early hours of April 16, 1947 in the port of Texas City along the upper coast of Texas. That morning, a recently reactivated World War II ship, Grand Champ, had been sent to France, loaded with about 2,300 tons 2 million kilograms, of ammonium nitrate, along with bales of Cecil twine machinery and small arms ammunition. The crew's objective was to deliver the ammonium nitrate to farmers in Europe and to help rebuild France. I know where this is going, because ammonium nitrate and diesel Kaboom. Grandchamp would stop at the ports to pick up some more supplies. However, at around 8 a.m., while Grandchamp was still moored, crewmen spotted smoke on its cargo hold. All attempts to put out the fire failed, because each time they doused the flame, a new red glow would pop up somewhere else. By 9 a.m., several spectators had already gathered along the shoreline, watching from a distance that they thought was safe. Steam pressure built up within the ship, eventually blowing the hatches open. Twelve minutes later, the ammonium nitrate reached its explosive threshold. The ensuing blast was enormous, substantially destroying the port and producing a 15-foot wave that was felt a hundred miles away. The blast resulted in the collapse of nearly a thousand buildings on land. The Grand Champs anchor was tossed 2.6 kilometers, that's 1.6 miles, across the city, and it was found inside a 10-foot crater. Two tourist airplanes flying nearby were blown out of the sky. Almost 5,760 metric tons of ship steel was blown into the air, some of it at supersonic speed. The fatality rate from the explosion was estimated to be around 560, including the crewmen who remained on the ship. Of the 28 men of the Texas City Volunteer Fire Department who came to douse the initial fire, only one survived. Overall, 5,000 people were injured and 2,000 were rendered homeless. The cause of the fire was never determined. Some experts suggest that it may have been caused by a cigarette discarded the day before. The Beirut explosion is ranked sixth among history's most powerful non-nuclear explosions. The incident occurred on August 4, 2020, when a large amount of ammonium nitrate housed at the port city of Beirut exploded. This explosion resulted in over 200 deaths and 6,500 injuries. Property worth over $1.5 billion was destroyed, and over 300,000 people were rendered homeless. The story has its roots in 2014, when a cargo of over 2.7 million kilograms of ammonium nitrate was confiscated 
by the Lebanese authorities and stored in a warehouse at the port of Beirut. This amount of ammonium nitrate is equivalent to 1.1 kilotons of TNT and quite dangerous under unfavorable conditions. However, it was reported that the cargo was stored in this warehouse without proper safety procedures and it remained in this location for the next six years. On the afternoon of August the 4th, 2020, a fire broke out in the warehouse. Also at that time, it was reported that a stash of fireworks had been stored in the same warehouse as the ammonium nitrate. A team of firefighters and paramedics was immediately called to stem the flames, but upon getting there, the crew reported that there was something wrong because the fire was unexpectedly enormous and producing a crazy sound. They battled with the flames, but nothing much could be done. A few hours later, the flames got to the fireworks, triggering a chain of explosions that would ultimately set the ammonium nitrate ablaze. The ensuing explosion shook central Beirut and shot a red-orange cloud into the sky. This red-orange cloud was then surrounded by a white condensation cloud. Residents of Turkey, Syria, Israel, Palestine, and parts of Europe reported feeling the shock of the explosion. In the aftermath of this chaotic event, protests began in Lebanon against the government for its negligence and failure to prevent the explosion. They also pushed Hassan Diab, the country's prime minister, to resign from office. While it is known that the explosion was a result of a fire within the warehouse, the exact cause of the initial fire remains unknown. The Chernobyl disaster is remembered now as the worst nuclear disaster in history. Ironically, it took place during a safety test. The event occurred on April 26, 1986 at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant located in the deserted city of Pripyat in Ukraine. In the early hours of that day, engineers at the plant were running a safety test for a system that would keep the nuclear reactor cool during an unexpected power outage. A nuclear reactor's core is required to be kept cool at all times, and if a power outage lasts for more than a minute, there could be safety problems. Since 1982, engineers had been struggling to develop a system that could cover this one-minute gap, and with three attempts already done, this was to be their fourth attempt. However, this procedure would result in something beyond their wildest nightmares. During the test, the operators made some critical miscalculations and destabilized the nuclear reactor. They had accidentally dropped the power to a near-zero level and were only able to restore it halfway when the reactor began to malfunction. A chain of nuclear reactions ensued within the system, causing a severe steam explosion. This was followed immediately by a fire outbreak that released enormous amounts of radioactive contaminants into the atmosphere. According to reports from the incident, 50 men died from the immediate blast and acute radiation poisoning. However, the aftermath of this event has lingered for decades, and since then, over 4,000 Ukrainians have died from the long-term effects of the exposure. Some reports estimate that across Europe, over 16,000 people have lost their lives over the years due to radiation exposure from the Chernobyl disaster, and investigations are still in progress to this day. Pripyat and its neighboring cities have since been undergoing a decontamination procedure, and this cleaning project is expected to run until 2065. The tragic event occurred in 1975 when China's Bangkiao Dam, along with 61 other dams, collapsed due to a tropical cyclone known as Typhoon Nina. The incident resulted in the third deadliest flood in history, affecting over 10.5 million people and leaving over 200,000 people dead. The flood covered 30 cities in 12,000 square kilometers and destroyed 6.8 million houses. The Bangkwao Dam failure also occurred during the Chinese Revolution when citizens were busy on the streets clamoring for change. While the colossal flood drew the world's attention immediately, the exact details of the incidents were kept secret by the Chinese government until 1990 when a Chinese author and former politician released a book with some details of the incidents. Ultimately, in 2005, having been pressured for a long time, the Chinese government decided to declassify the documents of the disaster. According to reports from experts, the collapse of these dams was a result of poor construction. These dams were built with too much emphasis on their water retention abilities, while little attention was paid to their ability to prevent floods. Indeed, Chen Xing, the chief engineer of the dam projects at that time, heavily opposed this idea. He cited the possibility of severe floods and advised that more emphasis be put on the dam's capacity to combat that potential situation. However, he was not only ignored, he was criticized, ridiculed, and removed from his post. So I'm not going to ask if you enjoyed that video, but I do hope you found it interesting. If you did, please do hit that like button below. Don't forget to subscribe, and thank you for watching. Thank you.